Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to go ahead and film another one for you guys and I apologize that it has been a little while but life has been kind of crazy and I can really only film when I look presentable and both my kids are sleeping and those tend not to happen at the same time. Case in point, not sleeping. But he's gonna hang out in the background. This is my little hobo, little baby Holden. Uh. See, I'm six months old and I'm just the cutest thing in the world love you so if you hear baby noises it's him if you hear pug noises it's my dog but she's not currently in here so okay i'm just gonna put him down on his, on his play mat over here there you go bud video is going to be for all those support people out there so labor support people people who are going to be in there with you when you're having your baby this video hopefully will be a really good place to start a conversation um, maybe watch it first yourself and then show it to your support person or if you're a support person watch this and then have a conversation with who you're going to be supporting during labor so I have a list on my phone I don't think it's 10 things but I it might be 10 things it might be more of just things for support people to know and things for you to do to prepare to be a support person um during the labor process as a labor support person one thing that i think is really 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 important is that you come in with the mindset that it is not about you the labor is not about your wants or desires it's not about how it affects you and your lack of sleep and your hunger or whatever it's about the laboring woman and the baby that she is birthing and supporting those two people um that's not to say that you can't be a part of creating a birth plan and figuring out what you and your um laboring partner want but as a support person it's not up to you if that plan changes and the lab your laboring partner wants something different and I think that's really important to remember. And it's important to remember too, in that it's not about you, that if she does something that you deem as like mean or like yells at you or anything like that, that it's not about you, it's about what she's going through. And to just let that wash over you and to not get offended and to not let that take you out of the moment. Um, even as a nurse, I definitely have had that happen. When I was very first starting off, um, I was helping a woman push and I was saying all my encouraging words that I say and she said you know could you stop I really I don't mean to offend you but this is not helpful to me and I was offended I'm not I'm gonna be frank I for a few more push-ups was just kind of like hurt and like personally offended and then I remembered this isn't about my feelings this is about her bringing a baby into the world and she is doing an amazing job of telling me what works better for her and i just need to take that and after those few contractions when i kind of thought through that in my head i was like okay i'm i'm still here i'm still her nurse i'm gonna support her the best way that she can tell me how to do at this point and that is by being silent while she's pushing and that's okay um so I think, yeah, just not being offended and remembering that the process is not really about you, even though you're there and you're an important part of the process, is going to be really helpful in making sure that you are able to be present for the process. Going along with that, being present for the birthing process is really important. And I touched on this in my 10 things that labor nurses want you to know. Um, and some people were kind of offended by this because I think they didn't quite understand where I was coming from. There is a difference between being scared, squeamish, not knowing what to do, not wanting to see your partner in pain and being totally disinterested in the birth of your child or the birth of the child if it's not yours um, there's a complete difference in those two things and one of them is okay and normal and one of them i'm gonna be frank with you is not if if you are interested in supporting your partner or at least trying to and you're not interested in the birth of this child then 
should you be there is is really my question still and so being present is so important and being there and however your partner needs you to be there and some partners need you to be there by not paying attention to them and that's okay and some partners will need you to be there by rubbing their back and getting them ice chips and, and a whole list laundry list of things where you're feeling very useful and I think in particular to see somebody that you love in pain is very 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 difficult and this is a generalization but I have found especially with my husband um, that men are fixers and so if you are a man support person and you're trying to fix it you can't fix labor it's going to happen regardless and it's not something that needs to be fixed it is a natural process but you want to fix it and you want to make the pain better and sometimes it's really hard when you can't do that to still um, be present but just being present and being there and again even if your laboring partner is telling you like hey stop touching me stop doing this just being there and being present is going to be so important in her labor that she's got somebody in her corner Something else that kind of goes along with being present is that you need to be an advocate for your laboring partner. They are going to be in a very vulnerable state. They're going to be in pain. They are going to be overwhelmed by everything that's happening. And so it's really important that you are an advocate for them and for their desires in labor. Now, sometimes these desires change. Um, if your laboring partner decides, hey, I actually do want an epidural, being supportive of that is important and not um, saying, no, you can't get an epidural. You said you didn't want one. You can't get one. But advocating for her, um, if you guys had maybe discussed that she wanted to do delayed cord clamping, um, just bringing that up again and reminding them. Or if you had discussed, you know, that you want to take the placenta home from the hospital, bringing that up again and reminding them because she's going to be so focused on birthing the baby and in that birth process that some of those things that she might want might get kind of pushed to the wayside if you're not there to advocate for her. So going on about being an advocate, something that's going to be really helpful is if you guys sit down and have a conversation well before labor on what she expects from you. Yeah. <laughs> what she expects from you and what um, you expect from yourself. So this conversation needs to happen um, in a safe space where you guys can really just be open and honest with each other. And you can say, hey, you know, if you get an epidural, I'm not really comfortable with being in the room, or I want to stay up by your head, or I want to hold your leg and help you push, or I don't want you to look at my vagina when I'm pushing, or I want you down there and I want you to help the doctor catch the baby. So these conversation pieces need to happen so that you guys are on the same page so that you can be an advocate for your laboring partner and so that you can um really help know what's what's what the plan is and what they want and what you guys both want as the parents potentially of this child. Part of being an advocate for the laboring woman is definitely being educated on the birth process. I think it's really, 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 really important that everybody who's going to be in that room has taken some sort of childbirth education class. And that could be something online, that could be um, going to the hospital and getting an education class there. But knowing the stages of labor and knowing what to expect and knowing that your urethra and your vagina are two separate holes and if you get a cat that are the baby can still come out these are things that are important to know as somebody who's going to be helping support um, a woman to give birth and then I think you know learning these things can be so overwhelming but when the time comes it's really nice to know them and to have some understanding of what is going on um, and that way you guys have the education to figure out what you want to do and make a plan so that you can then be an advocate for your labor part, laboring partner. And I think that all of these things really go hand in hand and they're so important. Um, and I think kind of my last point for in the, in the labor process is knowing when to tag out and knowing, okay, I am not going to be good in this situation. I want to be there present for my partner. I want to help her, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Um, or, with the last one, I really struggled. I felt faint. I had to sit down. Yeah. So knowing that is so um, crucial. And by knowing that, you can set up a plan in place to still help support your laboring partner. So that might be having her mom or your mom come and help support labor or her best friend. Or hiring a doula or 
labor support person who will actually come and help coach you in be being a labor support person, as well as help coach the woman through labor. And last, the last thing that's really important for being a labor partner is talking afterwards about the labor and the birth with with the woman who just gave birth. So part of the psychology about becoming a mother is talking about your birth and really kind of exploring mentally everything that happened to you because when you're going through it, it's it's just happening and, and it's not something that you're really able to process. So part of becoming a mother is processing that information. And so being able to talk with the support people that are there, hearing what an amazing job you did, just really cheering them on is so important afterwards and making them known how thankful you are that they were able to help birth potentially your child or your grandchild or, or your niece or your nephew or anything like that, you know? just that she did amazing and that you're so proud of her for birthing a child and bringing a child into the world is so important. And letting her share her story is so important too. And listening and listening a lot because we tell our birth stories a lot and they are a part of our history and a part of our child's history. Those were all of my tips for support people. I hope that this video served as a really nice conversation starter for um, you and your potential labor support people if you are a um, mom. And if you have any other tips, definitely leave them in the comments down below. I love having conversations with you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye.